Hi and welcome to the sixth part of this Unity for Beginners course. I'm Gavin Lon. Let's recap. In the last part of this course, we created two folders in the Assets folder. One named Prefabs and the other named Materials. We created our obstacle prefab by dragging and dropping a three-dimensional cube object provided within the Unity editor from the hierarchy window into the Prefabs folder. By dragging a game object from the hierarchy window like this into the Assets folder, note that the Prefabs folder is a child folder within the Assets folder, we effectively made the cube object a reusable asset, i.e. a prefab. We could then derive our other obstacles from the obstacle prefab by simply dragging the obstacle prefab onto the ground plane in our scene. One of the advantages of using a prefab as the prototype for an obstacle is that if we wanted to change the material for all of our obstacles, we only need to change the material once on the relevant prefab. This change to the material will then propagate to all of the obstacles derived from the prefab in the game. So in the last part of this course, we created a basic material within the materials folder, within the assets folder, and we dragged it onto the prefab, resulting in the appropriate change to the material for all the obstacles in the scene. So in this part of the course, we are going to create a UI display where the player's stopwatch time will be displayed in the top corner of the user's screen. As discussed, the main objective of the game is to complete each level of the game as fast as possible. So the person playing the game will be able to look at the UI display and see exactly how well the player is doing in terms of the player's time while playing the game. We are going to use an asset named Text-TextMesh Pro to display the stopwatch time to the user. So let's add this asset to our scene. To do this, we can click the plus sign icon here, then select UI text dash text mesh pro. So you may then be presented with a dialogue to import TMP essentials. So if you haven't imported TMP essentials, please proceed to do this. Great. You can see that in the hierarchy window, a canvas asset is now present and a text TMP in parentheses asset is a child element of the canvas element. So we are able to move the text object on the two dimensional canvas object. So this text object is going to be used for displaying the stopwatch display. So let's ensure that it appears in the top left-hand corner of our screens. You are able to click this 2D button here to get a two-dimensional display of the canvas and the relevant text object. We can use the game window to see where our stopwatch time display will appear to the user. So once we are happy with the positioning of the stopwatch time display, we can think about writing the code for updating the stopwatch display appropriately i.e. while the player is traversing the ground plane. Let's first change the font color for the text display from white to black, so that the text stands out against our current background. Right, so let's write the code for the stopwatch functionality. Let's open the player movement script. Before we write the relevant code, we need to create a marker in our game scene. So when our player object passes through the marker, the stopwatch starts. So we are going to use a quad object for this trigger. So let's add a quad object to the hierarchy window like this. Let's appropriately position the quad object in front of the player game object on the ground plane near to the beginning of the ground plane. So we want the player game object to be able to pass through the quad object and for this action to start the stopwatch timer. At the moment, if we try to make the player game object pass through the quad object, the player object simply bounces off the quad object. So the quad object is a solid object at the moment. Firstly, let's name the quad game object start. Then we can make the quad game object our trigger for starting the stopwatch by checking the convex checkbox in the mesh collider component that is attached to the quad object. 
And then we must also check the trigger checkbox here. Now when we run the game, the player game object is able to pass through the quad game object, the game object we named start. By checking the canvas checkbox and the trigger checkbox in the mesh collider component of the quad object, you'll see that we can also hook into an event that is fired when the player object passes through the quad object. This allows us to write custom code in the relevant event handler method to start the stopwatch at the point where the player game object passes through the quad game object. So let's get down to writing the code to implement our stopwatch timer functionality. So let's first create a private boolean variable named timer active and initialize it to false. We want our timer to activate when the player game object passes through the quad object that we named start. We can use the onTriggerEnter event handler method provided by Unity to hook into the event that fires when the player game object passes through the start quad object. So let's test to see that the player game object has indeed passed through the collider component attached to the quad object. So to do this, we can assess the name property on the relevant collider object using an if statement. As you can see, the collider component that the player object has passed through is passed into the onTriggerEnter event handler method at runtime. So we can create an if statement to check if the name property of the relevant collider object is start. When this occurs, we want the timer active boolean value to be set to true. Let's write appropriate text to the console window to test that our start condition has worked and the timer active variable has been set to true. Great. Then within the update method, we can write code that updates the stopwatch time display once per every frame. Let's create two private variables, one of type time span named stopwatch time. We must bring in the system namespace where the time span type resides and a variable of type float named time track. Let's create a public variable named stopwatch display, which is of type tmp underscore text. Let's make sure we bring in the namespace where the tmp underscore text type resides, like this. Then from within the Unity editor, let's drag and drop the text in parentheses tmp object into the stopwatch display field within the player movement script component section of the inspector window, which is of course attached to the player game object. We'll now be able to reference the text object from within our player movement c -sharp script. So within the update method, we want the stopwatch display to update once per frame while the timer active boolean value is true. We can simply increment the time dot delta time value, which returns the time in seconds that occurs between frames to get the timer value in seconds for our stopwatch. We can then set the stopwatch time variable to the time span dot from seconds method so that we can get the appropriate time span value. Then we can update the stopwatch display text appropriately within this code. Note that we are using the toString C# -sharp method to format the stopwatch display appropriately so that minutes, seconds, and milliseconds are displayed. Let's run the code. Great.
great. So we want the stopwatch to stop updating at the end of each level. So we want the stopwatch time to freeze when the player object crosses a point positioned appropriately near to the end of each level. So we can pretty much use the same logic that we used for starting the stopwatch. The only difference, of course, is instead of starting the stopwatch, in this case, we want to stop the stopwatch. So all we need to do is when the player goes through a quad that we'll position at an appropriate point near to the end of this level, that we set the time active boolean variable to false. So this will mean that the stopwatch display will not be updated when the player object crosses the appropriate point at the end of the level, and the timer active variable is set to false. So this functionality is easy to create because we have already created most of the functionality when we created the start quad. So let's duplicate the start quad in the hierarchy window like this, and let's name this game object end. Then in the on trigger enter method, let's create an if statement that tests to see if the object that the player game object passes through is the quad object named end. If it is, we want code to execute where the timer active boolean variable is set to false. This means that within the update event handler method, that the stopwatch timer display will no longer be updated. Excellent! If you liked this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing to the channel. Please ring the bell so that you can be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, I've included a link to my Buy Me A Coffee webpage below in the description. It will of course be greatly appreciated. I love reading your comments, so please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you and take care.